Welcome to the Egg Whisperer Show, a program exclusively designed to promote reproductive health awareness and discuss fertility preservation options. Here is your host, the Harvard-educated fertility specialist, Dr. Amy. She's known as the Egg Whisperer. Fertility expert, Dr. Amy Abazadu. And you have yet another success story just launched by an East Bay fertility doctor. Welcome to the Egg Whisperer Show. I am so lucky to have Dr. Kristen Brogard back again on today's show. Welcome, Kristen. Thank you so much, Dr. Amy. It's honored to be back. Thanks for having me. Awesome. So we're going to talk about a new sperm assessment. It's a test called the Path Sperm Cutie Test. <laughs> I love the name. And I know it's probably QT, but I can't help but saying cutie. So I just want to share with our listeners a little bit more about you. If they missed our last episode together. You have a PhD from Northwestern University where you developed a novel epigenetic technology that allowed for a more accurate understanding of gene expression and health in disease cells. You completed your postdoc research with Dr. Lee Hood and later supported the launch and growth of Aravail, a revolutionary new wellness company that combines cutting edge science, personalized data, and tailored coaching to help clients optimize wellness and avoid disease. You're now the chief scientific officer of Path Fertility, whose goal is to raise the standard in male reproductive health, starting with male infertility. Welcome back. Thank you so much for that wonderful introduction. So I would love for you to tell us a little bit more about your background and connection to the fertility field. I was originally in academics where my doctorate and postdoctorate work focused on developing personalized medicine technologies. Um, and from that, I took that education um, and started applying those personalized medicine technologies to, to people, actually commercializing them. Um, and you know, in that time, I got older. I had friends who are older and family members who are older and started ex uh, um, seeing and um, you know, personally experiencing a miscarriage and seeing family and friends and coworkers starting to go through this, um, you know, their own fertility journey. And I learned that there, through that, I learned that 30% of um, couples going through infertility treatment um, are diagnosed with something that's called unexplained infertility. Um, that really blew my mind, especially being in the technology business and wanted to, that just means there's just not the right technologies out there to complete the full di the diagnosis. So that's really what got me interested. Um, and me and my co-founder started uh, uh, Path Fertility with our goal of really bringing personalized medicine to the fertility journey. And what specifically led you to the male side of the equation? One in eight couples experience uh, some sort of infertility. And during that, I was, I was shocked to learn that really all the procedures um, and the treatments are, are, almost, are almost entirely focused on the female. Women go through a very extensive and invasive set of procedures um, and very, very little is actually focused on the male side, which just blew my mind when biologically we know that 50% of infertility is due to the male and, and the guidelines essentially say, look at sperm under a microscope and count them and see how they're moving. And um, that is, we have the technology that really could blow that out of the water. Um, so that was, it was just a, you know, an opportunity to really improve this field. Um, and also lots of infertility goes undiagnosed because men go undiagnosed. And um, when men go undiagnosed, women are put through procedures that will not work if a, if a man is infertile. So it really can save couples time, money, and just the, the stigma and the burden and the whole, the whole process if we could get better diagnoses up front. I love that. I'm just writing this down as you're talking because I'm thinking I see a quote that we really need to push out to people lots of infertility goes undiagnosed because men go undiagnosed. Like that's I feel like a bumper sticker on my car coming soon. <laughs> Absolutely. So what have you found out about the sperm side of things? It was a very um, standard thought process that sperm were just carriers of DNA to be put into the egg um, and that they, they didn't really have anything complex 
Um, but what we do know is that there are very complex processes all the way from, you know, just the sperm being produced, the spermatogenesis, um, to getting to the egg, to the penetration of the egg. And also the sperm do carry really important components after the fertilization. So there's a, it's a very complex system um, that really needs to be unraveled. And um, what we're focusing on and what we have found out is that epigenetics actually is a huge component of what regulates sperm and is important for um, sperm to function normally. Wow, and I'd love to talk more specifically about this PATH sperm cutie test and your ideas and like how that all works. So share that with us. PATH sperm QT and QT stands for quality test, but I love that you call it cutie. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I love that. Um, so what this does, it focuses on a very specific type of epigenetic modification that we know is crucial for sperm function, and that's called DNA methylation. And what we do in this test is we actually look under the hood. We're not looking at sperm, how they move, what they look like under a microscope. We're actually looking at are the genes that are necessary for a sperm to be a healthy sperm, are they regulated properly with this DNA methylation. And we could go into a lot of detail about that, but it's really understanding at the molecular level how sperm are functioning, uh, which is which is crucial for all the processes to, to work right and to get fertilization in a baby. And epigenetics has definitely been a, a huge topic recently. And where does this particular test fit into a fertility assessment? Um, and who should really be doing this test? Do you think like every patient, should it be part of my tushy method and my balls method? And we can talk a little bit more about what those things are for people who don't know. But at what point should someone be telling their doctor, hey, I want the PATH sperm quality test. Please order it for me. We have this now live in about a dozen fertility clinics throughout the U.S., um, really with the goal of understanding where exactly in the fertility journey this adds the most value. And what we found um, from physicians and patients is that it is the most valuable with the initial assessment. So when you combine it with the initial semen analysis, the PATH sperm QT together, you actually get the most predictive results of um, the likelihood of pregnancy and live birth with timed intercourse and IUI cycles. So it's really it's a really important factor to do up front because it could actually rule in or rule out male factor infertility at, to a much higher degree than we have seen previously. And what does the test tell you? Like, how does the report look? You know, how is it going to guide me as a doctor in terms of like, you know, what changes can a patient make based on the results? When we receive a semen sample, we analyze the DNA methylation patterns on a man's, in a man's sperm. And what we find is we categorize it into three categories. So one is excellent sperm quality, one is average sperm quality, and the other is poor sperm quality. And what we know is that there is a very statistically significant difference in pregnancy rates between those groups. And this is for couples undergoing IUI specifically. So what this can direct is if you have an excellent sperm quality, a sperm QT result, um, and you know, very good semen parameters, your likelihood of getting pregnant with an IUI cycle is much higher than average, than what we see on average. If you have a poor, um, this is indicating that compared to average, you are you have much lower chances of getting pregnant, you know, holding, controlling for some major female factors, obviously, but with assuming a, um, a healthy female partner, it actually shows that you're much less likely to get a pregnancy and a live birth. So what this could do is um, when done up front, you can either direct to the treatment that will likely work best with them. And what we find is that IVF actually overcomes the issues that are seen with PATH sperm QT. Or instead of trying three or four IUIs, you try one or two, and then you move on to the next treatment. Um, because chances are never zero, and you can always try. Um, but the goal is um, for these couples, time is really of the essence. So this can get you to what you think will work most quickly and um, you know, following what you need in your life and financial situation. Yeah, and I'm excited to see what your ongoing studies show as well. And I'm sure that 
you know, you also have a lot of great success stories too. Can you share some of those with us? We have um, multiple research pilots ongoing and also three clinical studies ongoing. Um, and we have two, two that I'll share today of, of pretty neat stories that we received from two physicians who are using paths from QT on the initial assessment. Um, actually, one is using it on the initial assessment. And um, what we found, this is a group uh, out of California, and um, they this man is uh, had previous chemotherapy trauma and a stem cell transplant and very low semen parameters. So on paper, uh, this was a urologist saw this and said, you know, I, I would direct you pretty quickly to treatment because on, you know, on paper, you're looking like you're going to have some, you're going to struggle to get uh, pregnant. And he sent um, a sample to us. He got a path sperm QT score of excellent, uh, which the, so, uh, the physician shared with the patients and said, you know, with this result, why don't you give it a little bit of time and start trying naturally? Because they had be been proactive because of all this, the cancer trauma. Um, and so they tried on their own and in less than three months they had conceived and are uh, pregnant and expecting. So this was, um, the physician said to us, you know, this is typically with what we had, our current standard of care, I wouldn't have told them to try naturally um, for a few months. Uh, they did and they were able to conceive without having to go through any additional procedures. Um, we have one study that from a clinical trial that we are doing with Baylor College of Medicine, where we received um, this past sperm QT result of a man and looked retrospectively at what he had gone through. Um, he, had, he was a 38-year-old man, very healthy BMI, very good semen parameters, um, but had been trying to conceive for almost two years and um, had failed six IUIs. Um, and if anyone has been through an IUI, that's a that's a lot, and that's hard to put um, the uh, the uh, partner's body through. And what we found, we they had a sperm QT result of poor, and it was a very poor. And what we what you know in this case, if this test was would have been part of the clinical practice and done up front, um, perhaps the couple would have tried one or two IUIs. Um, and now in their clinical notes, it says they're going to stop trying and not do any more um, type of fertility treatment because they've really had enough. And if it happens, it happens. So if this was done earlier, it could have directed treatment to something that was more likely um, to get them a baby. That's helpful information for me to hear because, as you know, I'm a fan of your test. I've been you know, doing it since we met, and I do find it to be incredibly helpful. And I think sometimes when people see poor quality, they're worried that IVF might not even work and that there's no hope. But the reality is not that. The reality is right. this is really a test to tell you that doing IVF does make sense in your case. And then if someone does have a poor QT result, is there anything that they can do to modify or change that result so maybe it could improve? And is there a situation where people should be repeating the test later and at what interval? Yeah, so something very, very cool about DNA methylation and epigenetics is that it's modifiable by the environment. Um, and so we have several studies ongoing now to try to understand what that means specifically for the path sperm QT score. Um, antioxidant use, lifestyle changes, smoking cessation. Um, we know that, so we're, we are, have those tests ongoing and that is really um, where we want to go. We want to be able to tell somebody this is your path from QT result, but we know these specific lifestyle changes can actually improve it. And that is, that's where we wanna go. Um, we do have anecdotal evidence that, you know, drug use and smoking actually affect it, but not enough to make claims. Um, and, but we do know that DNA methylation in sperm is very affected by diet, exercise, toxins, chemicals, environment, stress, sleep, all of that. So that's something that is, it's going to be a, a great focus of ours moving forward. Excellent. And then you have to come back again and talk to us about all those things. So we can teach people about what they can do to improve their DNA methylation in their sperm. So this test is great. I mean, I'm so glad you're doing this work, but I also, I can't help but think that there might be some broader implications of this type of innovative test. 
what are they? So in addition to the, you know, the lifestyle improvements, so the really understanding how it's related to your lifestyle, um, we're starting to understand that also sperm epigenetics in general has an association with longer term health outcomes. So really understanding, um, you know, what that means for longer term incidences of uh, autoimmune diseases, cancers, um, because sperm is a essentially a canary in the coal mine of a lot of other, you know, things going on in your body. And it's just a way to see uh, as a, you know, a canary in the coal mine. So um, the broader implications are one, understanding what's affecting it in your environment and two, understanding the, the longer term implications of health. Got it. And then what about in offspring? Is there any implication of health in the offspring if let's say you're doing IVF even and you're using sperm that has a poor score? DNA methylation patterns can be associated with different offspring outcomes, including um, higher incidence of certain um, neuropsychiatric diseases. Um, we do not have any indication just because of, you know, it takes time to start to collect that data of any implications of uh, offspring health related to past sperm QT, but that is something we definitely would be tracking. And then I'm sure some people are going to say, well, I already did my sperm DNA fragmentation test. Why do I need a, a path sperm QT test? How would you answer that question? How do they compare? So totally different analyses of the DNA. So um, DNA fragmentation looks actually at the um, stability of your actual chromosomes. So if you have breaks in your DNA, um, it's it's an indication that there are, you know, having, you know, replication of those cells could be disrupted. Um, where past sperm QT looks at modifications that sit on top of your DNA and regulate gene expression. So DNA fragmentation is very very specific to understanding large uh, stability of the actual DNA structure itself. And then let's say if someone's listening and they want to order this test, I mean, for my patients, I order it for them, but take us through step-by-step step, what happens when someone or their doctor orders the test. And what if you have a doctor that doesn't know about the test yet? How does the process work? It is an at-home collection kit that your is a physician ordered test that your physician can order and we can ship you an at-home collection kit. In some cases, physicians have the kit on site if they want to hand out. So that's an at-home collection kit that gets sent directly to our lab after a semen collection. We analyze the DNA methylation patterns on your sperm and then the report is sent directly back to the physician. Um, in cases where in cases where you don't have a, uh, so we have on our website, pathfertility.com, uh, we have a physician portal where a, or a tab where physicians can actually download the requisition to order it directly or sending us an email on the contact information. We've reached out to several physicians from that, um, that method. Um, also, if you uh, you don't have a physician at all, We're if you connect with us, we're happy to link you up with one of the physicians in our network for ordering and consultation. That's great. And then what is the amount of time that someone could expect that it will take for them to receive the results? Yeah, it is a two week turnaround time, which is similar to the DNA fragmentation results um, for upon the submission of the semen sample. And if someone wants to learn more, order the test where it's available, how can they access it again? pathfertility.com um, and that will get you to all the information about um, sperm QT and, um, con and feel free to contact us through that website. Excellent. Well, I think you guys need a path fertility line of supplements, a path. I mean, I just love the name <laughs> and sperm cutie. I mean, how can you not like that? So take the sperm cutie test to complete your path to fertility. Exactly. Really, I should keep my day job, but so Kristen, thank you for coming on. Thank you for sharing with us all the exciting research that you guys are doing to help my patients become parents. I can't say thank you enough for continuing to innovate and help us all. Thank you. Mm -hmm.